everybody, good morning. So I wanted to come on this morning and answer some questions. And one of the biggest questions that I get on every app that I work on um, is how, you know, I can't come and see you in Texas, which I totally understand. But you know, what can I do to advocate for myself in my doctor's office. I can't even, you know, get a doctor to talk to me about menopause, perimenopause. So I've, I've all of this is in a brand new blog that is at Dr. Mary Claire. Um, <clears throat> um, if you get it, y'all, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got two vaccines yesterday. I got both COVID and flu and, um, I'm not functioning on all cylinders. So, um, if you go to the top of my TikTok page, there's the link in bio, and then if you scroll down, the blog is there. If you just go to galvestondiet.com, the blog is there. So if you're just joining me, hi, do me a quick favor, take your finger, double tap my face 10 times. So right now I'm talking about tips to on how to approach your healthcare provider about menopause and HRT. So let me preface this talk by telling you that even in OBGYN, the vast majority of OBGYNs do not feel comfortable talking about menopause, okay? So it's, I don't wanna blame them um, because they weren't trained. And I know this because I was a former residency training program director and know that the menopause curriculum is very, very small. So when we do OBGYN training, it's a four-year program, right? We spend probably 55, 60% of our time in obstetrics, which is very important. Like everything in OBGYN is important, okay? So we do all the obstetrics, high risk, low risk, babies, da, da da whatever, surgery to have the baby, all the things, okay, done. Then we do the rest is gynecology. So we have less than half of our time spent in everything to do with gynecology, which is pediatric gynecology, gynecologic surgery, a huge chunk of that time on how to do hysterectomies and, and all the GYN surgeries that we do. And then we do um, oncology, G1 oncology. We do reproductive endocrinology. And so those are set blocks. There is no menopause block, none. Okay, we get a couple of lectures. There's no menopause clinics that I know of that anybody rotates through, certainly not in the program that I was running. And so you get out in the world and a third of your patients, you know, of average age are perimenopausal, menopausal, postmenopausal. And you're like, I got nothing, you know? And so, um, and a lot of people, and there's not a lot of CME or advanced training on menopause. Like I get frustrated every month. I get my green and gray journal from the American College and American Journal of OB-GYN. And there's almost never a menopause article, menopause directed article. There's tons of stuff on surgery and equity and all important stuff, but it's like menopause just gets swept under the rug. Okay. So that being said, how do you advocate for yourself? Okay. You, you're stuck. You, you, your insurance is making you go to this doctor. You can't, you know, go anywhere else. What can you do to try to get, um, to try to get yourself some help? Okay, so I'm going to be going through this. But again, all of this is in my blog at galvestondiet.com or at the top of the link in the bio. It's the newest blog we have. If you go to the link in bio, you just scroll down to where the blogs are and you can find it. All free, easy information. So I know you're feeling frustrated. Okay, you're having menopausal symptoms, perimenopausal symptoms, postmenopausal symptoms, and you're not alone. One third of us, one third of the female population, people born with ovaries, is somewhere in their menopause journey. Okay, you are not alone and it's time to normalize the conversation and start talking about it. You don't have to suffer. Despite the discomfort that we experience on this journey and the readily available, safe and efficacious therapeutic options that could improve your quality of life and possibly prevent some chronic diseases, only a small fraction of women are offered treatment. So if you were even offered treatment, let me see it in the comments. Were you offered treatment, yes or no? And what were you offered? I'd love to see it. Drop it in the comments below. And then take a quick second, double tap my face 10 times again. We're trying to drive the algorithm and get likes and that, you know, and thank you for the follows, the shares, the likes. You can hit the share button right here to share this with someone who you think um, it would be effective to, okay? So, 
According to his Yale University study um, that examined insurance claims of over 500,000 women, okay, 500,000 women, they looked at the insurance claims. 60% of women with significant, significant menopausal symptoms sought medical assistance. They went to their doctor and they're like, I'm dying. I'm having hot flashes. I'm having night sweats. I'm not sleeping. I'm having joint pain. I'm having headaches. I'm having gastrointestinal changes. I'm having belly fat, okay? Um, Yet... More than 75% of those women were left untreated. They went to the doctor complaining of menopausal symptoms, okay? And they weren't treated. 70, only 25% were offered treatment. So, um, all right. So, yes, I'm reading your comments. So you were offered the pill and antidepressants. You got patches. They made no difference. She just fobs you off, not offered anything. Okay, you're a mess. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. Antidepressants. You wish medical college was offered programs in the medical field. I would, I would absolutely love that. Um, so, all right. You deserve better, guys. You deserve better. All right. So here are my top tips to make most of the time with your provider who hopefully is committed to helping you. <clears throat> so that you can advocate for yourself and your health and your well-being. Again, this is all in the blog. Okay, it's all in my blog at galvestondiet.com or it's at the link in bio. You just scroll down to the blogs. Okay. All right. So how do you prepare for your hormone therapy appointment? So you're going in to talk about menopause. You want to know what your risks, your benefits, your options are, right? Here's my tips as a doctor, okay? Um, try to schedule the first appointment of the morning. Most likely will ensure most of the time, not all, unless she's post-call, that you have a fresh physician. She hasn't have a backlog of patients already. Tell the staff that you have issues that you would like to discuss so the scheduler knows to block off additional time. Now, remember, this is not part of your well woman exam. That's not how insurance works, okay? Um, this is a problem visit, so the pay differential will be different, okay, if, if you're using insurance for this. Consider, consider, consider showing up for the appointment, if, especially if it's first morning, in a fasted state, so you will have no delay in getting your blood work done. Some clinics offer immediate blood draw right there. Others do not. You can call ahead and ask, hey, if she wants blood work, can I have it drawn immediately? So go in fasting just in case there's some labs that she wants to do for you that need to be fasted, okay? Um now, write down all of your family history, diseases, illnesses, like write down all your questions, go in with a list because everybody gets a little shell shocked. You forget, you forget. And I would recommend um, writing all that stuff down and going in with a list, okay? Um, so also your family history, your symptoms could qualify you if you're using insurance for certain tests that may not be covered otherwise. So you now have a diagnosis, okay, of family history of blood clots, family history of cancers, family history of hypothyroidism. I mean, all these things run in families. So it may, um, so yeah, this is this would not be a well visit. This is a consultation. This is a pro, what we call a problem visit in medicine. So um, let's see. Keep a symptom journal. Yeah, we talked about that. So, you know, any changes to your health since your last visit, aches and pains, fatigue, hair loss, weight gain, weight loss, constipation, forgetfulness, depression, etc. Anything you can think of, write it down. Write it down so you don't forget, okay? Um, all right. And then consider your preferences for managing your symptoms. Think about this ahead of time. Um, or would you consider hormone therapy? Do you not even want to consider that at all? Do you want to take a herbal approach? Do you want, you know, how do you want this to affect your lifestyle? All, all you, you deserve the conversation around hormone replacement therapy, but you don't have to take it, but you need to understand what your risks and benefits are so you can make an informed decision for yourself. Okay. Thank you everyone for the likes. Thank you. Thank you guys. Just keep hitting my face. Like take your finger and tap my face 10 times. That gives me likes. That drives the issues. So um, now when I approach a patient for menopause care, now I've chosen on my own to only do menopause care. I just focus on care of the perimenopausal, menopausal, postmenopausal woman. That's all I do. I don't do surgery. I don't deliver babies. I don't even have hospital privileges anymore. My choice. Okay. Um, I approach menopause care. At, oh, thank you for the rose. Thank you, dear. Um, 
Oh, the ceiling fan behind me is <laughs> the best treatment. Um, as a toolkit right? And you may have heard me say this before. And what is in our toolkit? What's in your menopause toolkit, guys? I want to see it in the comments. What do you think I talk to patients about in their menopause toolkit? When I'm talking about keeping them healthy as long as possible with as few symptoms as possible, having a beautiful, healthy mind, beautiful, healthy bones, beautiful, healthy muscles, a beautiful, healthy energy, beautiful, healthy sleep, you know, and decreasing the risk of chronic disease. So, uh, fiber, vitamin D, health, eating healthy food, diet, exercise, hydration, diet changes, HRT. So y'all are all nailing it. Okay. So here's what I talk to my patients about. And I talk about every single one. I have an hour with my patients. A new patient gets an hour, follow up gets a half an hour. Okay. Um, I talk about hormone replacement therapy as being one part of menopause care, but not everything. Okay. I talk about nutrition. I talk about exercise. I talk about sleep. I talk about stress reduction, and I talk about possible supplementation if she has gaps in her nutrition that we can't fill, okay? All of those are as equally as important as the other, okay? You don't, I don't just throw HRT or antidepressants or something at a patient and send her out the door. I have that luxury in my clinic, okay? Um, okay, uh, Thank you again for the rose. That's awesome. All right. And thank you for the likes, guys. Keep them coming. We're up to, oh, about 18,000. That's amazing. All right. So, so continuing. Remember, all of this information on how to advocate for yourself at your doctor's appointment is in the blog, okay? In my blog, the newest blog we have. I am not a functional physician. I'm a board-certified OBGYN. I practice evidence-based medicine. I kind of, I don't, I'm not functionally trained. I don't even know what that is, but I do... I do, I guess you would consider me a little bit functional. Um, I don't, I, I don't know. I'm just me. And I practice menopause care in the best way I can figure out how to do it. I don't know what that means. So, um, okay. So arm yourself with hormone therapy information and share it. Don't be afraid to hand your healthcare provider research articles to advocate for yourself. And I have them linked. I have them linked in the <laughs> blog. Okay, so, all right, your services are valuable. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, and I'm gonna tell you, all right, so how do you find doctors in your area? I have two resources for you. One is my physician referral database. This is crowdsourced. These are people who were recommended by y'all, okay, who had great menopause experience care. I All we do in our office is make sure that they're legitimate doctors and that they have all open offices and then we just take your testimonial. We It's anonymous. We just have your first name and last initial and um, we link them all by state and by city. So you can go to my resource and see if there's a doctor there that you might, you might find. Sorry, drinking coffee. Good morning. All right. So... Um, also North American menopause society has a list of NAMS certified practitioners. Wow. We're up to 18, uh, viewers, 23,000 likes. Thank you guys. Keep tapping my face. Keep them coming. You can share this video here. All right. So a survey of the United States of so us, y'all know I practice in the U S OBGYN residents. Okay. Trainer found that only one in five received any formal training in menopause medicine. Only one in five. So don't blame your OBGYN. They're probably, they're under so much pressure to see so many patients if they're employed as quickly as possible to focus on things that generate money for their employer, which are procedures, delivering babies, sitting there and talking to a patient about menopause, teasing out what is chronic logic aging, what is chronic disease, and what is menopause, drawing the right lab test is hard. It takes a long time. And I'm sorry, our suck ass medical system insurance companies do not want to pay for it. Okay. And all I can do is talk about it and hopefully advocate for you guys and teach you how to teach your provider. Okay. All right. Um, sharing information from a credible source do not show them my TikTok video. They're going to immediately dismiss you, okay? But showing them a peer-reviewed journal article is the best and smartest thing you can do. And if they throw it back at you, get up and leave, okay? So sharing an information from a credible source will show your provider that you have done your due diligence and it will help the two of you work together to determine the most appropriate course of treatment for you, 
okay? So after years of research, the renowned menopause organization, NAMS, North American Menopause Society, gives us fresh hope with its updated position on menopause hormone therapy. The consensus is that for a healthy woman, Younger than 60, within 10 years of menopause onset, the benefits of hormone therapy outweigh the risks. Okay, all of you who are freaked out about cancer, your doctors have not been able to keep up with the latest recommendations, the latest research. They are so busy with their pants on fire, delivering babies and doing surgeries and doing stuff. Menopause, you know, they weren't trained. They don't don't really understand it. They don't know how to do the nuances. Okay, so... um, so the there all these links are in the blog. The links are in the blog. You can go click on the link, download this, hand it to your doctor, hand it to your healthcare provider, hand it to your nurse practitioner. Okay. So um, all right. Um, hormone therapy is not a one size fits all solution. Okay, that's why we have different options. Don't let your healthcare provider corral you into one thing especially if it's compounds or pellets. Why aren't they letting you choose from FDA recommended options? They are just as body identical as the shit that they're making in the compound, not shit, as the stuff they're making in compound pharmacies, okay? You should use a compounding pharmacy when what you need from traditional insurance covered hormone replacement therapy is not available or you need a different dose or it's not working for you, whatever. But the gold standard should be estradiol from the pharmacy, from Walgreens or CVS or whatever pharmacy you use. It should not be compounding. I'm going to say it loud and proud. You don't need to pay that kind of money to get safe and efficacious healthcare. And for God's sake, do not let them, if you and your healthcare provider decide that pellets are your best option, then by all means do it. But if you were not offered anything else, If they didn't talk to you about cost, differential, what you could afford, if they are lassoing you into pellets and telling you they're the greatest or the only thing, that's all I'm going to do, that is a red flag and you should seek care elsewhere, okay? Again, pellets are compounded. They're not better. They're not safer. Nothing, okay? Don't let a doctor talk you into a Dutch test. A Someone who focuses on menopause care does not need a Dutch test. I am smart enough, compassionate enough, empathetic enough, and well-trained enough to not have to charge you hundreds of dollars for an unnecessary test. I, can, I believe you. I believe you. Your healthcare provider should believe you. They don't need a lot of these tests to diagnose perimenopause. Perimenopause is a a diagnosis of exclusion. It's diagnosed from symptoms. You don't need all these expensive tests. Guys, save your money. A lot of you are being preyed on by doctors who are healthcare providers who really aren't well-trained and don't know what they're doing. So they're depending on all these expensive tests to make the diagnosis for them when they really don't need to do it. Okay? So... Um, all right. Again, all this information on my blog, galvestondiet.com. Um, go to the blog, pause blog, and you will find it. Okay. Um, yeah. If your doctor is refusing, the only thing they're offering you is pellets. That's a red flag, guys. It's a red flag. They're making a ton of money. If a, if any healthcare provider is offering you something and will not give you any options and they are personally profiting from the sale of that medication, that is a big, huge red flag. Big, huge red flag. Big red flag, okay? I'm not shitting on pellets. It's simply another mode of delivery, okay? There ain't nothing wrong with a Honda, okay? Honda's a great car. If you want the Mercedes, you can go get the Mercedes and feel fancy driving around, but it's you're getting to the same place. Spending a lot more money. Not shitting on Mercedes either. If you love your Mercedes, peace out. Good for you. I didn't like mine. I have one. Um, All right. That's enough about cars. Okay. Um, All right. Um, Back to the blog. Okay. So the blog, the blog, the blog. The other thing we did is, and I'm going to get to your questions, I promise. Um, Okay. Take a second. We're at 33,000 likes. Keep tapping my face. I love talking to you guys. Just stopped in. Hello, hello, hello. Um, We are talking about my latest blog, how to advocate for yourself at your OB-GYN's office or whoever, healthcare provider, women's healthcare provider, to have the discussion about HRT. All right. So this is what you should never accept from your healthcare provider. Y'all ready? Y'all want to hear this? This is what you should never, 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 never accept from your healthcare provider about hormone therapy. Are you ready? Do you want this? Yes or no? 
Yes or yes? <laughs> the blog, okay. Um, share this, guys. Share this right here. I'm going to go through what you should never accept. Ever, 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 ever. Okay. The blog, galsondiet.com, or there's a link at the top of my TikTok page, link in bio. Okay. Oh, all right. Here we go. Your healthcare provider, I'm reading this straight from the blog. I wrote all this a little bit ago. Should not tell you that this is just the time in your life and this is your new normal. Fuck that. Excuse my language. Okay? You do not have to suffer. All right? Yes, menopause is a natural stage. But please don't feel that that means that you should have to put up with all the symptoms and all the health risks and do nothing about it. Never, ever, ever put up with that. And thank you for the follows, guys. Please follow me. Okay, I'm getting a notification from TikTok. Hi, <laughs> my name is Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am a board certified OBGYN physician. I now focus solely on the care of the menopausal woman in whatever phase she's in. Peri, meno, post. I'm your girl, okay? I do a ton, a ton of education on this website, on TikTok, on Insta, on Facebook. It's a full-time job. Um, I have a menopause clinic outside of Houston, Texas, um, but I feel like everyone deserves the care that I provide to my, you know, so I'm trying to teach you. Thank you for the follows, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so close to 2 million. Like, I am like 9,000 new followers away from 2 million. So, oh my God, share this video and follow me. We might hit it today. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, it might happen. So, um, thank you for the follows, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so what should you not accept? I'm gonna say number one again, number one again, okay? Your healthcare provider should not tell you, ladies, that this is just a time of your life and it's natural and this is your new normal and you should just accept it. Suffering is not acceptable when we can do stuff about it, okay? You're not crazy. I'm here to give you hope. I'm here to normalize the conversation. I'm here because I went through it. And I was like, what in the ever-living hell in nine Hades is going on here? I wasn't taught. I wasn't trained properly. Here's what I knew about menopause. Vaginal dryness, hot flashes, night sweats. Only give her hormones if she's going to jump off a roof. No other reason. Okay, try antidepressants first. That literally, oh, and bone density. Okay, her bones get. I, no, unfucking acceptable. I want to live, excuse my language. Sorry. If you have kids in the room, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I want to live a really long, 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 healthy life. Okay. And I may not have that luxury. Okay. If y'all don't know anything about me, it's my brother's birthday today. And I'm doing this in honor of him. So he died in 2015. Let me take you to my little wall. <laughs> um, so this is my dad. So dad died of COPD um, in 2021. He died in May of last year. Okay. Um, he was old. It was, it, it, he was in his 80s. It was expected. But, you know, it's hard to lose your dad. This is my brother, Jap. He died when I was nine years old from leukemia. Okay. This is my brother, Bob. He died in 2015 from liver failure. And this is my brother, Jude. He died in 2020 from a end-stage esophageal cancer. Okay. This is why I do what I do. This is why I teach what I teach. This is why I live the way I live. Because I have children. And I have to model behavior. I can't change my genetics. My genetics fucking suck. Okay. And, um, I have a super high chance of, of getting cancer. And if it hits me, if I get cancer, I want to know that I've got the best fighting chance to survive it. I want to know that my kids, you know, see their mom working hard. I'm not just going to accept it. And, um, menopause and the changes increase inflammation and increase my risk of cancer. And I'm fighting that. I'm fighting it with nutrition, with HRT, with everything. So today is Bob's birthday. He would have been 63. I do not have a surviving sibling that has made it past the age of 60 yet. I've got one. He's 60. Um, through my three older, I have four older brothers. Three have passed away and so have died. And um, that's why I do what I do. So, okay. Number two. So we're talking about what you should not accept when approaching your healthcare provider, which you should never, 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 never accept. Okay. Thank you for the likes, the follows, and the shares, guys. It means everything to me. Thank you for the roses. Um, 
It is unacceptable for your healthcare provider if, if they claim to treat menopause, okay? You see it on their website, I'm going in to, for my menopause, to say that they don't prescribe HRT. Unacceptable, okay? It's up to you and what you want to try and for them to say whether or not it could be right for you, okay? Depending on your medical history. It is not for them to say, I don't prescribe HRT if they advertise themselves as an obstetrician gynecologist or a menopause specialist. HRT is hormone replacement therapy, okay? Unacceptable. They should put on their website, I do not treat menopause, all right? If they continue to refuse, we have a list of recommended physicians. The link is in the blog. Oh, it is in the blog. I have to talk to my person. Oh, thank you for the crown. Thank you, lady. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, um, or you can reference the North American Menopause Society. They have a list of certified providers on their website, okay? But again, it is unacceptable for a healthcare provider who claims to do women's health care, okay? Claims to treat menopause to tell you they don't prescribe HRT. It's not okay. Not okay. That is part of treating a menopausal woman is having the discussion and offering it if she's a good candidate. She does not have to accept. Okay, thank you for the hearts, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of the things. Okay. Um, number three, do not allow your provider to impose unnecessary time restrictions saying they'll only prescribe this to you for a year. They'll only prescribe this to you for two years. You have to stop at a certain age. That's not a thing, okay? That is not a thing. Um, this is an ongoing conversation, and as long as you feel like you're a good candidate, you and your physician feel like you're a good candidate, you can stay on hormone therapy. The end. You can stay on it. Okay. So here's the other really cool thing we did, and I have to give kudos to Margaret. Uh, Margaret is our um, develop. Uh, she works for us with Pause Life and Galveston Diet, and she is our direct director of coaching and curriculum for the nutrition end. But she loves she she helps me with blogs. She loves doing research. She's a badass. Okay, and I said, hey. There's all these companies. People are asking me about all these companies that are popping up virtual hormone companies, virtual menopause clinics and all that stuff, online care, okay? And she said, I said, I want somebody to get in there, research the top four, and let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. And we did it. So it's in the block. So virtual options, after all your efforts, if you're not able to get the care you deserve, please don't give up. We got four online providers for you to check out. They're not sponsored by me. They had no idea we were doing this. We just went to their websites, pulled all the information, and did a side-by-side -side comparison. So we did Ever Now, My Alloy, Buy Winona, and Renew Youth. We have cost, membership, what, who sees you, who you, do you talk to a doctor, do you talk to a nurse? It's all there for you. All there for you, okay? If they take insurance, that's all there. So please, if you're frustrated, you live in a remote area, you cannot find anyone. I prefer you meet with someone in person. Okay, so go to our referral list. So, okay, where is the blog? I'm going to the questions now. The blog is at galvestondiet.com, but it is also at, um, if you go to the link in my bio at the top of the TikTok page, you'll see, just scroll down to the blogs. It's, it's the first one, okay? The first one. All right. Do you have names of doctors in Houston? Me. Me. <laughs> Come and see me. <laughs> I do. Um, if you go to our refer physician, <laughs> I'm in Houston. <laughs> I'm in Friendswood. So um, come see me. Um, Galveston is too far for you in Bay City. My clinic is in Friendswood. Um, driving an hour is, I have patients come see me from all over the world, Okay. I have patients fly in, God bless them, and I'm trying to train other, I'm gonna be starting a program to train other practitioners who are interested in doing what I do and how I do it, and then um, in other areas of the country. So I'm super excited about that. So we'll be getting going with that. Okay, so drop your questions in the comments. I'm happy to answer. Go check out the blog. Um, and so um, 
I would love for you to learn how to advocate for yourself at your healthcare provider's office. Okay, so um, do I ever do virtual appointments? I did in the beginning. So I'm only licensed to practice in Texas and Colorado. So unless you're physically not in the state of Texas, I can't see you, but I my clinic is full with inpatient, full full with inpatient. So virtual, you just don't, I don't, I can't scan you. I can't do your body scan. It's not the same. And so I am just, I'm just full to the brim with people who are willing to come in and see me in person. So no, I do not do virtual visits. Occasionally I'll do a follow-up virtual visit, especially if they came in from far away. Um, then, and it's too much, you know, it's very expensive to come see me if you're coming from super far. So, um, all right. So bookmarking the blog. Thank you for sharing. You're so welcome. Um, over the counter supplements. All right. Do y'all want to see what supplements I take and I can walk you through them? Do y'all want to talk about that right now? Um, uh, do you want to see my supplements? I can take you through what I take, why I take them. I don't recommend them for everyone. And are you interested? I can, I'll go to my supplement cabinet and we can do a virtual walkthrough. Yes, please. Okay. Hang on. Let me get some coffee. Here we go. Uh, do I think everyone should take these supplements? No. And I'll, I'll tell you why. So get a pencil while I'm moving over here. Hang on. All right. Welcome to my little supplement cabinet. Some of these are my husband's and the kids. Oh, this is, these are awesome. So I do hemp heart. So this isn't a supplement. This is food. But this is kind of my trick on how I get good protein. I put this on my yogurt. Um, so on my yogurt parfaits, I do flax, ground flax. I do hemp hearts and I do chia, chia seeds. Um, all right, I'm in my pajamas. Yes, but I'm gonna put the phone up here. Okay, y'all ready? Okay, so I take a probiotic. Why? There are a couple of really good studies that looked at overweight women and uh, probiotic supplementation. And they control for all these factors. And on the probiotics, lower visceral fat. So everything I do is to stay healthy. I don't have a weight problem now. I don't, I don't even think about the scale. I don't care what the scale says. I look at the scale to see if I'm gaining muscle. Okay, so I have a body scanner because I get dinged for having very low muscle mass. So I'm really working on this, right, to stay strong and healthy. Um, so... I, um, so all of the stuff that I research, I research menopausal women only, 35 plus. I don't look at studies on men. I don't look at studies on athletes. I'll, I look at stuff done on women, okay? So, so all these 25-year-old trainers come at me with these studies done on 25-year-old trainers. And I'm like, dude, show me the evidence on me. And go talk to your mama and come back to me and tell me what she said when you told her she should be losing weight by counting calories and it ain't working. Um, okay, so I take, I have two kinds of probiotics. I don't sell these. Okay, hang on. When I'm home, and y'all can screenshot this and then flip the thing around, I take this one, all right? It was at my health food store in Galveston. I talked to the lady for a long time. I read all the labels. So when you're picking a probiotic, billions is better. Okay, I do this to restock the pond in my gut microbiome. Everything is better when I take this stuff. Okay, so when I'm home, I take these. It's the women's 85 billion. There's nothing special about women's, but I want billions is better, lots of billions. And you want, look at all the different strains. You want something with a lot of strains. You want microbial diversity, it's huge. Okay, so this is the one I take. I get no sponsorship from them. Okay. And then when I travel, I take this one. So this is women's probiotic. Again, lots of strains. But this one is encapsulated, so it travels well. Okay, so I take the raw when I'm home. And when I travel or, you know, when I don't have access to refrigeration, I take this one. So y'all can screenshot these. Okay? No sponsorship. All right. So, um, okay. I also take, and y'all know, and now I am going into partnership with this company. I've been on this for a few years. This is Neuromag. Why do I take this particular magnesium? Because magnesium l theronate okay, y'all can screenshot this guy. Okay, this is from Life Extensions. Magnesium l theronate is the magnesium that researchers have found crosses the blood-brain barrier the best, okay? So, 
They use when the studies are done looking at depression, looking at ADHD, looking at sleep. This tends to be the formulation that they use. Okay, I do not have a magnesium deficiency. I get plenty of magnesium in my diet through pumpkin seeds and whatever. And I take this to help with sleep. Okay, this really helps my sleep. So I'm taking it for medicinal reasons. Okay, it's pricey. This will run you about $35 a month. If you can find it cheaper, let me know. But I am in part, I will, we have, we are working on a partnership kind of like I do with the collagen where I'm going to have a Galveston diet brand like label on this particular thing, but it's not out yet. It's coming in 2023. So just FYI, full disclosure. Um, but right now we're not partner, no sponsorship. They're not paying me to say this. This is actually what I take and I've been taking it for years. Okay. So I also have supplements that I created for me, for my patients, for my followers, whatever. And, you know, I take, this is an omega-3 and vitamin D combo from the Galveston diet. So I created this one. It's highly purified fish oil. It comes So if you're allergic to fish, you cannot take this, okay? Um, highly purified, no fish burps, of course, with uh, 2,000 IUs of vitamin D. This is a maintenance dose of D. This is not if you're deficient, okay? This is to keep your levels, okay? So... If you want to screenshot that guy. Now, this is at the link in my bio. If you want to go check that out, you can um, you can go and go pick some up of this. All right. I also take, now I read, who read Lifespan by David Sinclair? Dr. David Sinclair, who read it? Oh, thank you for the follows, guys. Oh, for sleep, one more time. I'll go through these again. All right. Screenshot this, everybody. Magnesium, l Neuromag, Magteen is also a brand name. You may be able to find it cheaper than the Life Extensions brand. Okay. Screenshot it. You got it. Thank you for the follows, guys. I'm getting so close to 2 million. Like, <gasps> so close. Oh, my God. It's like, might happen today, tomorrow. I don't know. What? Um, all right. Anybody else read David Sinclair's Lifespan book? Rocked my world, rocked my world, rocked my world. So because of that book and longevity, I am taking resveratrol and um, NNM. Screenshot these, okay? Again, no sponsorship. These people don't know I'm talking about them. Can you see them? Resveratrol, n and Now, there are some great studies on menopausal women with resveratrol showing all kind of good stuff, and they're linked on my website. So, But it's much lower dose than this. They only did 75 milligrams twice a day, and that had, they had increased brain function, decreased visceral fat, decreased hot flashes. So I was like, damn, man, they have all this longevity stuff. So... Um, so I just take the min I take one like every other day because the, the when the studies were done in menopausal women with the positive effects, it was much, much lower than this crazy ass dose, which is super high. So so this is one of these has 500 <laughs> and the ladies were taking 75 twice a day. So I take one like every other day and call it good. Okay, resveratrol is extracted from the skin of the grape. Uh, it's a um, antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. Okay, and then the NNM is uh, nicotinamide mononucleotide. Say that fast 10 times. All right, again, for longevity, it's not for weight loss, it's not for anything, it's to keep me alive and help fight cancer, hopefully, because that runs in my family. Okay, all right, now, I also take, this is from Galveston Diet, the turmeric. Okay, our turmeric supplement, this is antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, helps with belly fat, studies done in menopausal women, amazing, amazing stuff, okay? Turmeric has a lot of menopause benefits. You can, I have a whole blog on this if you want to go check it out. If you're taking turmeric, keep taking your turmeric, that's great, okay? But this, we made it, and so, yay, yay me, all right? And then, every afternoon, I, so... Ladies, who knows how much fiber you should be getting in your diet per day? Who much? Who knows how much, okay? You should be getting, how much? I wanna see it in the comments. 25, y'all have been following me for a hot second. Okay, 25 grams, 25 grams, 25 grams of fiber minimum. I shoot for 35 every day. I know in my diet I get 25 a day because I'm eating nuts and seeds and chia and flax and all my you know stuff I put on my yogurt. and Okay, but I supplement to hit that 35. Okay, so Galveston Diet Fiber right here. Okay, um, Fiber does a shit ton, no pun intended, 
<laughs> stuff for your body. It feeds the gut microbiome. It slows the absorption of glucose into your bloodstream. It lowers your insulin levels. Like people who have diets rich in fiber who get the, hit that 25, women, men, it's 38, okay? They need to be in a lot more fiber than us. Um, this fiber, so, but this should not be your main source of fiber. This is just a helper. We do not, you supplements do not, uh, you know, negate a nutritional choice that was not in your best interest, okay? That is not how supplements work. Supplements are meant to supplement a healthy, nutritious diet, okay? So I shoot for 35 grams a day. That is my personal choice, women. But most of y'all who have not paid attention to your fiber intake are probably only getting 12 or 13 a day. That's the average for a woman. You're only getting half of what you need. So this is the prebiotic. Prebiotic is a marketing term, not a medical term. No one in medicine says prebiotic. We just say fiber. So it's just a way to market to you. Um, so fiber... This, you need to start slow. If you've never taken any fiber supplement before, it will cause bloating, gassy, distension because you're, you're overfeeding your gut microbiome. They've not used to this much fiber. You have to go slow with it. But this is my fave. It has a delicious orange flavor. I mix it with my collagen. So again, I mix these two after I break my fast. I'll mix these two together and I'll sip it all afternoon while I'm taking my supplements, okay? So these are on my website. So the collagen is good for skin. It's good for bones joints, all the things. It also has hyaluronic acid and vitamin C, which is for skin. Okay, so again, if you're already taking this stuff, good on you. That's awesome. Don't worry about mine. Be happy with what you've got. Do you want to go through them again? Y'all want me to go through them again? Okay. Um, yeah, avocados have tons of fiber, fruits and vegetables. That's it. I get it. I, every day I have an avocado. Every day I have nuts and seeds. Every day I have an, you know, I love my apple. I have an apple a day usually. That's how I hit my 25 grams of fiber. So, um, okay, so one more time. Fiber and, and collagen, I, I do them together because I'm lazy and I can combine them and just drink them all afternoon. Okay, you can, these are on my website, galvestondiet.com or um, Dr. Mary Claire, the link in bio. Oh, we're at 73,000 likes. Thank you guys, keep the likes coming. Just tap my face a bunch of times. All right, whatever. I do take n and m Now, do I feel like a magical warrior after taking these? No. They're not meant to like, they're meant to keep you alive longer and you don't feel it. So, um, let's see. All right. I don't take a multivitamin. Somebody's like, what's your favorite multivitamin? I get enough vitamins in my fruits and vegetables and my um, nuts and seeds and my whole grains and legumes. So, I don't need to take a vitamin. I'm not deficient. Um, I take turmeric. Okay, this is our gallons and turmeric. And then um, I take probiotics. This is one for when I'm home. This is one for when I travel. If y'all want to screenshot that. Um, and I take an omega-3 and vitamin D combo, especially on the days. I eat a lot of salmon. There's actually salmon in my fridge to she me up. Um, and I take mag, mag for sleep. Guys, I'm not deficient in mag. This is more medicinal to help me with sleep. Um, this is the mag when my patients are complaining of sleep or, or resistant depression. This is something I, I tell them to try. Okay. Um, all right. So I, oh, I need to put my, okay. So let me get to the question. So drop your questions in the comments. We're doing, wow, we have 1,200 viewers. Uh, supplements do not have to be FDA approved. Um, they're considered to be foods and not medicine, so the FDA does not have to. You don't go through any approval process from the Food and Drug Administration for supplements. Um, okay, when do I take them? I take them, so I, I have no calories. So right now I'm, I'm fasting, right? I'm drinking black coffee in here, and I uh, break my fast typically around noon. I had um, two vaccines yesterday. I got my flu and my fourth COVID booster. We are going on a big family together trip. We're going to be in close with two immunocompromised family members, so I'm doing it to protect them. Um, plus, I'm a doctor, and I don't want to give my patients the flu. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, so I'm not feeling that well today, so I will probably break my fast earlier than I usually do. No big deal, okay? Um, so I'll probably, when I get off this, I'll probably make some food and break my fast. Hello. Oh, okay. Glasses. Um, hip optical. Somebody type it out in the comments. HIP optical. It has changed my life. I send them my prescription. The glasses are precious. It's, they run, they have all these, you can get coupons or whatever. 
These have, my glasses are very fancy with, they have a prism and they have trifocals, okay? Because I can't see far, medium, or close, nothing. And um, they're, when I go to the local optometrist, who I love, she does my eye exam and I pick out frames, you know, the whole thing. It's over $500 with insurance for me to get a pair of glasses with all of the things that I need to be able to see. And then I'm like paying out of pocket for the second pair, which is over a thousand, because what if that one breaks or I lose them, you know, and then I can't see. So I'm like stuck. So then I just see this random ad, thank you, TikTok advertising for this hip optical place. And I was like, you know, and then I was like, $200 just can't be real. And they're like, 30 day guarantee. We'll put the lenses in them. You just can't try them on. So you kind of have to know your face shape. So I ordered a pair that came, the lenses were perfect. Like, I can see perfectly with, I can't see y'all right now. It's blurry. Um, I was like, holy crap, except the glasses were a little heavy and they hurt my nose at the end of the day. So I sent them back. They gave me a full refund and I ordered these and so, or they just traded them and, and they're great. And so I highly recommend them. Zero sponsorship. It has, if you guys are like suffering, I got sunglasses. I now have three pair. So now I've spent what I would spend at the optometrist. And I have four pairs of functional glasses. So if I lose one or I want to change up my look or I'm going, like I have some that I work out in that don't slip as much. So love it, love, 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 hip optical, change my life. But you need your prescription from the optometrist, okay? So hip optical, hip, H-I-P optical, Google it, whatever. Um, they are, <laughs> they're not paying me to say this. This is zero sponsorship. Okay. Um, uh, shit. Okay. So I'm going to go through, do I recommend ashwagandha? I think it's worth a travel, a trial. Um, I don't take it. I didn't find like it did much to me, but I've had followers and some patients who swear by it. So uh, it might help, but it's not something I recommend routinely. I recommend hormone replacement therapy. Now, if you can't take HRT or you choose not to HRT, then we launch into discussions about other things. Um, uh, there's no reason to take DHEA supplements. I've done multiple research articles. I've, I've looked at the data over and over again. I was shocked when people were recommending and I'm like, why, what am I missing? You know, and I started diving into the data. There was one study, one done on elderly women, elderly, like in the nursing home, could not move or walk. Okay. And this is the study they used to say you need to take DHEA. Now, if you're a woman watching this in that condition, then listen up. Okay. These women were in their well over 65, okay? The average age was like 70-something, 80-something. And they gave them DHEA supplements, and they found that their testosterone levels slightly improved. Taking that one study and saying that all women should take DHEA is, I think, ridiculous. And so I'd like to see the study done in perimenopause, in early menopause, in mid-menopause, you know, on us, and how was it helpful? So... I. I don't take it. I don't recommend it. You know, I don't think it's going to hurt you, but um, it does not. I don't see any data clearly saying it does what it, what they claim it to do. So um, let's see. I'm looking at the, okay. So everybody double tap the screen real quick. We're at 91,000 likes. I would like to get to 10,000. And if you don't follow me, I welcome you to follow me. My name is Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am a board certified OBGYN physician. I focus on care of the menopausal women. I also am culinary medicine certified, which gives me a strong background in nutrition. I've married my passions of women's health um, I started with a nutrition program and that's grown into a whole menopause brand and I now have a menopause wellness clinic and it's just kind of like the best thing I've ever done with my life and my training and my passion and my, my gifts. Um, and it's, I'm just giving back to you guys with education. So, um, Oh, 101,000. Yay. That was so, well. you guys are so great. So, um, we're also getting really, really close to 2 million followers. Like it could happen in the next day, two, three this week for sure. I think so. Please follow me if you don't follow me. Um, and I have a book coming out in January again, self-promotion. Hello. Um, and so you can pre-order an autographed copy of the book. If you want an autographed copy, you just go to my website. It's all there. You can go check it out. Galvesondiet.com or go to the, um, Dr. Mary Claire at the link. But earlier when I first came on the talk, I I was talking about my latest, the latest blog we came up with, which is how to advocate for yourself at your doctor's office for hormone therapy. Okay. And I want to go over again, the top three things that your healthcare provider should never, ever, ever, ever tell you ever. No, do not accept, do not accept this. Do not accept it. Do not accept it. Okay. 
Your healthcare, I'm reading this off the blog, and the blog is at the link in the bio at the top of my TikTok page. So just go up when, I'm, when you're done listening to me or just, I don't want to listen to you anymore. I want to go read the blog. Click up there, go to the top, click on link in bio, scroll down, you'll see the blog. Okay. Your healthcare provider should not tell you ever that this is just the time of your life and it's your new normal and you need to accept it and move on. Unacceptable. You go to them for suffering. You go to them for education. You go to them for options. You don't go to them for their personal bias. Okay? I don't know of a man who goes to a provider. Who is told, you just need to accept it. This is a time of life. This is a normal. ED is normal. Okay? Just saying. Okay? Okay? Just saying, just saying, just saying. That is unacceptable. You should not accept that. Yes, menopause is a natural stage. So is erectile dysfunction. So is low testosterone. So is the slightly decreasing testosterone in a man. But it does not mean that you have to put up with suffering. It does not mean that menopause can't be pathologic. Okay? It does not. Some of you have wanted to unalive yourselves over menopause. Okay? Okay? This is not acceptable. You do not have to accept it. We have treatment options for you. It is possible. Okay? All right. So, do I have to say it's louder for some of you in the back? Okay. How do you know it's menopause? If you have not had a period for one year and you're over the age of 45, it's menopause. That's it. You don't need expensive testing. You don't need a Dutch test. You don't need to spit in things or pee on things. No. Okay? This is... It is unacceptable for your, when you go to your healthcare provider with suffering, for them to tell you this is a normal part of your life and to get over it. It is not okay. It is not okay. All right. You deserve better. I'm going to say it again. You deserve better. You deserve better. Okay. Um, Number two, it is unacceptable for your healthcare provider to tell you they don't prescribe HRT, hormone therapy, especially if they advertise that they do menopause care. Okay. Or if they advertise they do women's health care. It is unacceptable. It is up to you. It is totally up to you and what you want to try, and for them to say if they think it's a good idea or not based on your medical history. But to categorically deny that they are going to even to entertain the discussion of hormone replacement therapy or hormone therapy is unacceptable if they are claiming to provide women's health care. The end. Not okay. And it is okay for you to call ahead before you show up for that appointment to make sure that they're willing to have this conversation with you and to cancel the appointment if they say no. Okay? All right. If they continue to refuse, we have resources for you. If you go on my website, link up here at Dr. Mary Claire, link at, um, if you go to galvestondiet.com, scroll all the way to the bottom, we have a physician referral database from y'all, people who you found did excellent menopause care, you wrote a testimonial, you sent it to me, we compiled them, put them by state and city, and you can read the testimonial and feel like this is something you wanna do. And we put their websites and their contact information for the doctor, for the healthcare provider, okay? Also, North American Menopause Society has a very extensive list of menopause certified providers for you to go see, okay? So, Resources for you. Number three, do not allow your healthcare provider to impose unnecessary time restrictions. For example, they'll only prescribe a hormone therapy for a year or two. That's not a thing. They have no reason to do that. There's no medical reason to do that. This is an ongoing conversation. And as long as you're having symptoms, you have the right to be treated. You have the right to be treated. Okay? Okay. Um, how do you know? Oh, so many questions, so many questions, so many questions. Okay. Um, is HRT covered by insurance? Yes. Traditionally it is not compounded, but you can get great kick ass. It's what I'm on. Y'all want to see what I'm on? 
What does the ob -Gen take for hormone replace replacement therapy? I'll show you. Hang on. I'm making more coffee. Hello. <laughs> so if you have a Keurig, you got to get one of these. I have two. So it's a reusable Keurig um, pod thing. So I don't waste the environment with the pods. And I just take my coffee and I put it in here. And when I'm done, I just rinse it out. And I just pop it in the Keurig. It fits right in. And I make my coffee. So, yeah, it's, it's a game changer. And it's so much cheaper so than buying the pods. Um, okay. So, um, hormone therapy. All right, let me show you. We're going to the fridge. Okay. So, I've recently changed. I'm going to show you what I used to take because I still have some. And what I take now. And I'll tell you why. So I used to take the combi patch, nothing wrong with the combi patch, okay? I liked it, I love the convenience, my estrogen and progesterone were in it together. And I've recently switched to an estradiol patch and oral progesterone, okay? A couple of reasons for that. One, there was a study out of France that looked at the different progestins. They, 75% of women in France are on hormone replacement therapy, by the way, 75%. So they have a lot more data than us. And so I was curious, what do they think about progesterone? And um, so the oral progesterone in the form of progesterone, which is what your ovaries used to make, so it's body identical, um, which is a medical term, not a marketing term, had the lowest risk of breast cancer versus the other progestins. And so I was like, you know, given my family history, I probably should switch, though I loved the combi patch, convenience. So now I'm on just a plain estradiol patch, which with my insurance cost me $5, $5, $5 a month. Without insurance, you can find it 25, 35. You don't need to be spending hundreds of dollars on hormone therapy. Progesterone is like water, 10 bucks. It's cheap. Water, like bottled water is more expensive than progesterone. Okay. If I ever prescribe testosterone, which I do not do for every patient, I don't believe in that. Um, but I do, if they are complaining of, um, hypoactive sexual desire disorder after we've ruled, if we've ruled out the other causes of sexual desire disorders, then, um, or other causes of sexual disorders, then I sometimes offer progesterone and I will compound that at a local compounding pharmacy, but that's a little more pricey. So, um, or we talk about, um, we talk about, there's two medications out there. One is Addy, A-D-D-Y-I, um, and the other is Vilesi, I think, Vilesi. Um, I've never prescribed that one. No one wants it. It's an injectable um, Addy I've prescribed a couple times, but it's very, very expensive, and there's no generic. So testosterone tends to be a cheaper option. My patients tend to go for that. Um, I love the fem ring. Oh, my God, I love a fem ring. I love a fem ring. However, they're so expensive. Most insurances have it at the highest tier and very few of my patients choose to spend their money on that when they can get a patch or the pill for dirt cheap. So, um, so I don't use pellets. I don't use pellets. I don't see a need for it. And I don't want to personally profit off of the sale of, of a, a prescription medication or, you know, of a medication to my patients when I have really wonderful, efficacious, safe options for my patients that they can use their insurance for. And um, I'm seeing pellet factories just shop, you know, pellet clinics pop up all over the place. And I just think it's, I just don't think that it is um, the best healthcare out there. I think you can do better. Um, I'm answering questions, guys. Okay. Uh, I do not take insurance in my clinic. Um, I um, cover lab. I'm not going to explain why. You can go to my clinic and you could see all the explanations and what exactly you get, which is a tremendous amount. You get an hour and a half of my time plus all the blood work and, and stuff. I think it's really, my patients are so happy. Um, so um, why do I store them in the fridge? The combi patch has to be stored in the fridge. The estradiol patch, no, but I just got used to storing them in the fridge, so I just keep them in there. So um, I would not take PrimPro. You have better options. I would not take PrimPro. Oh, the book comes out January 10th. So the Galveston Diet book, the nutrition program, and I have a lot of information on hormones in there, is coming out January 10th. You can pre-order it right now and get an autograph copy. 
um, at my website. So it's galvestondiet.com or just go to the top of the TikTok page. Okay, I'm losing my voice. I have loved talking to you guys today. I love this topic. I hope that this empowers you to be a better advocate for yourself at your doctor's office. That is my goal. I have tons of information on my blogs, all free about ABCs of hormone therapy, what to ask for, why, you know, what about you need to know about testosterone, etc. So, um, what to do if you can't take estrogen, what are your other options, etc. So, um, we will chat again soon, but my voice is going. So take care guys.